I'm just curious why all of a sudden you look like some kind of MTV punk. Today's video review, things are about to get a little stranger as we have a look at the new McFarlane toys, Stranger Things, this is Punk 11. The very first thing we're going to do is figure out how tall 11 stands. So taking the tape measure, putting it right to the top of her head, and stopping it right there. There we go. From her feet to the very top of her head, the figure stands 6 inches exactly. And in centimeters, let's go ahead and get that to centimeters, 15.2 centimeters tall. For her accessories, she comes included with the same clear Stranger Things display stand that we've seen with other figure releases, or at the very least, the other figures that we've gotten from the McFarlane Toys Stranger Things lineup. Nothing really new to report here. Um, I don't have as much the issue if you watch my other videos of the Stranger Things figures. They had put tape along the back of the stand and then putting it, of course, inside the, the clamshell case. Every time, every single time I seem to take the tape off, it left this gross, sticky, ew residue all over the back of the display stand. Luckily, not so much the case with this one. And it does have, the, of course, the Stranger Things written across the top. Some of the older figures also had this more frosted. This one here just happens to be clear. And some of the free future figures seem to have come included with clear stands. Just feel the need to mention that to you. She also comes included with her, her little mask her little porcelain doll mask. It can fit over her head, but in all honesty, the head sculpt is so good, I'm probably never gonna display her with the mask on, but don't worry, I'll show you guys how that looks on her in a second. It's been really nicely cast here. You can see that there's like little pock marks and little indentations to it, just kind of look like it, make it look like it's a little cruder. They've even got like eyelashes around the eye socket areas, and then they've got a little hole also even in the mouth area, so she can breathe through it. Nice overall looking decent enough mask. And then of course, no 11 figure would be complete without the pushing, you know, spell, not spells, but the pushing abilities, the abilities that 11 has kind of can be uh, emitted from her fingers here. And of course she comes included with that as well. Nothing really new to report there. So we'll put those aside and don't worry, I'm gonna go back to that. I'm gonna get back to that in a second. As for the figure itself, now if you have been dedicated viewers to this channel, thank you very much for that, by the way, you'll know my absolute disgust. <laughs> Ooh, that's a harsh word. Such a disgust for the, uh, the uh, previous 11 that we had gotten. And uh, she is just the toughest figure still to this day to stand properly. This is what the two figures look side by side. And don't worry, we'll do some closer examinings of it in a second. It does look like the newer 11 is a little bit shorter. So what I'll do is I'll put her, put them side by side to show you. Well, I guess they are, they are the same height. It's just misleading that the older one, the one on the left, oof, oh, such an ugly figure, uh, just uh, kind of looks a little bit taller. Now, this is the original 11 with the jacket and of course the dress, this the dress uh, girl dress that they try to put her in. And of course the Punk 11. One so could certainly say it's a vast improvement, although it may very well be the same head sculpt. The more I examine things from left to right, makes me think that it might be a very similar head sculpt and maybe it's just a paint that has been changed. I know, I know, of course this one has the longer hair. It definitely is a vast improvement. I may be uttering the words vast improvement, both of those words collectively over the course of this review, over this review frequently. So I really do think this is a step up. If only this had been the first figure, and I understand why they would have given us this figure first, but this figure is so much better 
from a likeness level to what we got with this part in my part of my wording for this but this garbage that we got with the original release not only did she not stand properly but her face looked terrible i'm sorry it looked terrible this head sculpt looks much much better of course this goes without saying that this one here is from series two where she has her hair a little bit longer i hope we're certainly not going to get this is not going to be the last 11 that we're going to get from series two i would love to see her with the curlier hair there as well but uh, decent decent upgrade from this abysmal release that we initially got from mcfarland toys now i've heard some indiv individuals through the grapevine had indicated that they had re-released this figure with a slightly better paint job I still think the head sculpt is terrible though, and I don't really even know how paint could have improved upon it, but maybe if I happen to see it on the shelves and it does look drastically different, I'll perhaps pick it up and, I don't know, give it a, give it a bit of a chance. Anyways, we're not going to spend a whole lot of time looking at this figure because it sucks. I shouldn't say it sucks. It's not, it's not a good looking head sculpt. This one here, on the other hand, does look very good. It's not without flaws, so I'm, of course, not going to look at it completely with rose-colored glasses. It is a McFarlane Toys release, and while that may even sound like I'm nitpicking McFarlane Toys as a company, they do take some interesting routes when it comes to their figure releases, giving us some decisions or them making decisions later on that I would then certainly question. The head sculpt, like I said, is good. The paint does come across a little gray. Um, you can't quite tell being comparing it, say, to my skin tone. But even if we, like, say, bring in, for example, Hopper, it seems like she is slightly discolored. She's sort of a muddier gray flesh tone. Don't get me wrong, it still is passable. It doesn't look like she's dead or anything like that. But I do think that the skin tone is a little on the gray side. I think the head sculpt is good. I think the hair is good. She's sporting her longer gray jacket, which you can even see like has some nice texturing added to it. They've added some also some buttons and even a pocket, and though none of which are really workable, at the very least, you can give them credit for the fact that they would put that in there. Underneath the jacket, even though you couldn't really take it off if you wanted to, she has a little black kind of sweatshirt underneath that, and then she is sporting her pairs of jeans. Now, I do think that the feet still are long. I mentioned this, I think, even when I looked at this figure, that the feet appear to be long. Even actually, when you put the feet side by side, you can see, there it is right there, what a drastic jump in foot size. I can't imagine the actress has grown feet this much larger over the span of one season departure, but even still, like that's a really long looking foot. In fact, let me just line up foot to foot. There's the ones with the peg holes. You'll also notice that the pegs have been moved further into the center of the shoe versus the ones that were on the heels initially. Some smart decision making on McFarland toys. Moving the peg further in also can help stabilize the figure. When you have it at the very back there, especially if she's got loose ankles, which I'm Luckily, this figure doesn't have so far, but if you move the peg further in, it means she has a more stable footing, even though I find like the figure stands fine anyways. One thing also to mention is her hand, or at least not her hand, but her forearm above that. I don't know what's happened here. I'm guessing this was supposed to be painted because you can see like there's these ripples that have been added to her wrist area. I'm sure that's not supposed to be the case. That probably was supposed to also be painted the same black color as the bandana that's wrapped around her wrist here. Jeans look good. A little bit of a stain on the back. I guess that's supposed to be there. Texturing is pretty good, pretty passable on the jeans. And even though, like I said, her her feet, her shoes seem much longer than what they should, it seems like she's almost sporting a pair of boats for feet. That's awfully mean. Um, it does look like her feet are a little on the long side. I do think like the, the shoes are a little overly textured. It's I feel like they should be a little bit smoother. You don't have to texture every single thing, McFarlane Toys. So even like the top of so the feet are rough. They're crude. But I guess you could chalk it up to the fact that she does have... Uh, she's wearing like old sneakers. They're not new. They're not pristine. 
Um, the nice little paint added to it. The laces look good to the credit of the shoes. She also is sporting her socks. One is over top of the pant leg. One is below the pant leg. And that pretty much in a nutshell is 11. Now she of course has the same problems that all the McFarlane toys, whether it be The Walking Dead or whether it be Stranger Things, have the same problem. It's these visible joints right here. They're supposed to be ratcheted, or I guess that's what they're trying to tell us they're supposed to be. You do feel like it hits a ratchet point when you are bending the arm. There's one, there's two, there's three. But is there not any other way that we could have gone about doing this? Did they even need to be ratcheted joints? Some of my older Walking Dead figures would certainly dictate the fact that ratcheted joints is not necessarily a saving grace that all of a sudden the joints are going to be still really tight. Even though right now on 11, they seem to be okay. I've had other figures like, for example, I don't know if 11 here has that problem. No, hers are pretty good. You can see that at least they've reduced the size of the, uh, the joint there. She's got a bigger, bulkier sleeve, mind you. But it does look like they're starting to use slightly smaller ratcheted joints. So that at least is something. Uh, Posability, by the way, on 11, we'll go ahead and talk about that now. Let's bring the camera down a little bit. Uh, her head rotates all the way around. It hinges up and down, and it also angles left and right. We can't also help but notice the little bit of blood that's trickling out from the bottom of her nose. Uh, her arms rotate all the way around. The arms hinge out. She does have the bend in the elbow. Once in, when you're doing this, you can hear click, 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 click. That actually was coming from my mouth. It wasn't coming from the elbow. The hands rotate all the way around. They hinge back and forth. Hands generally are the loosest things that seem to go first and foremost when it comes to these McFarlane releases. Because the hands, now here I am, are here I am championing for the fact that these have ratcheted joints, but the hands usually get a lot looser than the elbows do, or at least they, they get looser first. She doesn't have much in the waist of a waist swivel. I guess you can still slightly swivel the waist. Legs split out, slightly moves forward, slightly moves back. It is really limited by how much you can move her legs here. She has the ratchet same, not quite the same because the ratchet is much further up. You can't see it's a little bit more hidden. There it is right there. Hey, hi, hello. That hinges back and forth. Legs, this part of the leg, a little on the loose side. So far, so good though. And the big, bulky, boat-like shoes rotate all the way around, hinge up and down, and slight ankle pivot back and forth. If only, I say to myself, I say aloud so everybody can hear me in the room, even though there's nobody in the room here but me. If only McFarlane had released this 11 figure first, I think I much ha would have had a much warmer reception towards the figure line as a whole. Let's bring the camera back up a little bit here. Unfortunately though, and just by process of timeline in the series, we got this figure first. A dismal presentation of what we should have really gotten from 11. Even though the head sculpts look similar to one another, this one does have leaps and bounds better looking, just defined details to it. Better paint, a little bit more richer and depth in colors. There's more contrast of colors, for example, versus the very pale exterior that this one has. Oh, by the way, can't also forget, I didn't forget, there's the mask right there. Put it over top of her face. You see what I mean? Even though it's nice that they include it, why would you want to cover over such a good looking face like that? Maybe at, the, maybe, maybe at the very least, you could put the mask up like that. And then also, just in case, want to make sure we cover off all the grounds here. Let's take her hand out, exposing a very tiny little peg. And we'll attach her, I just call them force hands. They're not really technically force hands, but oh, it just dropped, just dropped one of the hands. Uh, we'll work it. We'll work it out in the wash. Uh, overall, like I said, good-looking figure, much better than the first wave of uh, eleven figures that circulated. God, I wish they could have gone back. I hope McFarlane. They're not obviously listening. I wish they could go back and redo this figure. It really, definitely deserves a better 
better head sculpt. If only for the fact, well, obviously that one has the slicked hair. I would even be inclined to pop the head off that one and put it on this one, even though it's not technically correct. For those that decided to pass on the McFarlane Toy Stranger Things figures based on the first dismal release of Eleven, let this review hopefully convince you otherwise to come back. If you're a fan of Stranger Things, even though this figure isn't perfect, it still has some of the plaguing problems that McFarlane puts into many of his figure releases. It's not specifically him, it's obviously his team. Though it does have similar problems to some of the Walking Dead figures and some of the Star Trek figures that we've looked at on this channel, this is definitely a step up from the first 11 that we got. Thank goodness that I didn't just give up on the collection altogether when it came to these figures. I think I actually reviewed Hopper. It might have been Hopper right after 11, and Hopper was enough to keep me still interested in the line. And I'm glad I did, because based on the Series 2, it does look like McFarlane Toys has gone back to the drawing board, or at the very least, has put a little more time and effort into their figure lines. Don't get me wrong, I'm not trying to necessarily criticize him at the company as a whole, but I do think like that first 11 figure definitely needs to be gone back to, and maybe given a fresh coat of paint or maybe given a new head sculpt. Or why not, let's just scrap the figure altogether and give us a second edition of that 11 with hopefully some of the things that they've learned from this figure. This is the way 11 should have been. Even though she doesn't look like this in series one or season one, this is the type of 11 figure I've wanted right from day one. And unfortunately we had to wait till season two and series two from McFarlane Toys before we would eventually get it. Like I said, she still has problems. Paint can be a little messy. Visible joints, those ratcheted joints, can still look really ugly on the figure. But at least those are all, I don't want to say cosmetic, but that's at least the way the figure has been built. Uh, cosmetically, the face sculpt is definitely a lot better than the one that we got before. And it does seem like McFarlane Toys did put a little bit more time into this 11 versus the first 11 that we got. Today's review, we were having a look at the McFarlane toys. This was Stranger Things Series 2 from Todd McFarlane and his fantastic team over there. And this was Season 2 Punk 11. I think it's Punk 11 or 11 Punk. Um, make sure you guys stay tuned because certainly we're going to have a look at the rest of the new Stranger Thing figure reviews. I've had them for a bit. I just never got around to reviewing them. So reviews of those will be coming shortly. Make sure as well you hit that little subscribe button down below because certainly more videos will be coming your way. And as always, guys, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time.